really that divine order <laughs> is the recognition of that I amness that that we always fall back to. That is our order. That is our life. And in the daily word today, it says divine order supports my life. That idea of recognizing I am and the idea of recognizing that we are that I am <laughs> is that order that supports our life. And it is one of the greatest truths of life all the time. It provides our foundation for all growth and a blueprint for everything, our thought processes, our decision-making. And in the Daily Word, it says when we feel stuck or bewildered, it is a sign that we need to remind ourselves of that. We need to say, what else is, what is really present right now? It's the I am that we pause and we are compassionate with ourselves. We release any of those other feelings or worries or doubts and remind ourselves that we are more. We are spirit, we are the I am. And remembering this helps us be patient and trusting those decisions and trusting the flow. In Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in this with all your heart. Um, and here's where I'm going to veer off here. It says, do not rely on your own insight. And yet we do need to rely. We need to rely on the insight that we are the I am. Maybe some of this humanity stuff that we form in doubts and in impatience and worry are what we need to um, not totally rely on. And the recognition that our human outlook and our perceptions get in the way. But we do need to rely on we are the order of the universe. We are that I am statement. So um, thank you all for being here. I wanna lay some groundwork for another piece I wanna to read to you before we have a little bit of discussion. But you know, when I was reading both of these and then saw the Ken Wilber piece about the I am, it really felt like it mushed together. And I think sometimes we get in the wrong idea about order being some outside of ourselves, whatever in the universe that we have to somehow follow. And here it's already in us. You know, and I, I know I say it every week, but it's like in our wording, we come up with all these words, you know, the, the um, guided, cultivating order, offering, um, you know, gratitude and renewal and getting rid of negative thinking. And yet what it's all pointing to all the time is that the order is there for us to recognize. And I know yesterday when I was, um, cause I offered demonstration and then I allowed people to ask questions. And one of the questions that came up was, you know, I'm told this, or how do you recognize that? And, um, you know, when you feel something, you have to totally act on it. And my response was, it's, it's all a choice and how we recognize, you know, Spirit, God, divine is not like shouting at us because we are that already. So when we hear those voices and we feel those turns and we're working on decisions, it's all recognizing that I am <laughs> part of us to move forward. Um, and Reverend Linda Martello Winsett wrote the story um, that's in the Renew book for today. And, uh, she, and I'm going to paraphrase some of this, but she says, we have been planning and our plans turn out well, we may be tempted to think it must be divine order. How many of us think that as soon as something turns out okay, you know, we must have been totally blessed on on high because it turned out the way we wanted or it's something happy and then all of a sudden we are extra blessed when we're blessed all the time. <laughs> it's, you know, we're not extra blessed because you know, we have a car that runs or, or anything. It, it, it means we are in that spot that that's part of our experience right now. And she says, when we don't understand why something unwanted has happened, we may be tempted to think <laughs> it must also be in divine order. Um, you know, so if something bad happens to somebody, and, and I know I've mentioned this before, but when my, um, when my husband was really ill, part of what happened around us was people asking, well, because first he had lung cancer. So the immediate response was, well, he must somehow deserve that because he must be a smoker. And first he's not a smoker, but even if he was, it doesn't mean that you brought that on totally yourselves because you know, we know some people that 
eat whatever and drink whatever and smoke whatever for 95 years <laughs> and other, you know, it depends on a lot of things, not just stuff like that. So, you know, whether it's positive or we think it's positive or we think it's negative, it doesn't mean we're being rewarded or we're being challenged. It means that's what we get to make decisions on right now. She goes on to say, divine order is never preordained or an imposed condition. Divine order is a principle and a power. Our spiritual capacity of orderly action, mental adjustment, and spiritual evolution. We name it divine because God is the organizing principle found in the structure, pattern, sequence, inherent, and all that is, and all that exists. So again, we're taking the idea and the recognition that God is everything, not some individualized whatever um, out in the universe that you know is is conducting it in some fashion. It's it's a living, breathing um, experience of learning and of being. She says we are fully human and fully divine. The more we attune to our divine identity, realizing oneness with God, with the universe, the more readily we increase our innate capacity for spiritual or divine order. Orderly thought and action flow from a mind centered in divinity. It's that I am this. It's the recognition. It's the reminding ourselves that we are. Right. And to, and whenever the, the, and again, we can't get away from our humanity because that's the experience of the I am in this present time. But to not, you know, cloud everything in that judgment. We nourish ourselves with research, with action steps. And I love that she says the action steps because so often we're like, let's meditate, let's pray, let's read our books, let's do all these things. And we forget that the next part of that is to go do something somewhere to, to express our talent in what we've recognizing is that I am at the time. Um, and you all have them. I don't, uh, Carol's talent is just managing buildings. <laughs> she does a really good job of that. Nancy, I've seen Nancy at the Playhouse before, and she's really good at interacting with people and helping out in that way. You know, and how do we keep cultivating that kind of expression and interaction with the I amness? We nourish that with action steps that divine idea eventually flourishes and blossoms into manifestation and manifestation means action you know it's not just um, making our our boards with everything that we want to manifest in our life after we do that what do we what kind of action do we take to accomplish that um, and in the revealing word unity co-founder charles fillmore defines order this way the divine idea of order is the idea of adjustment and is, and as this is established in human thought, our mind and affairs will be at one with the universal harmony. We find empowerment and freedom in our ability to adjust, shift, flip a switch, transform, or modify our thoughts and actions. It's a continual change. It's a continual change. As we grow more, as we learn more, as we heal more, we're willing to adjust in that and the new recognition of how we are expressing I am. And by acknowledging that, we evolve, we progress, and we push not just ourselves forward, but all of humanity into that space of, of divine realization. So yeah, that was a good Good. Again, that's from Linda Martello Winsett in the Renewal book. I'm going to pause a moment. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share or comment or say about any of that thus far? An excerpt here that he's labeled, life is not stationary. It says the bottom line is life is hard, but we need to persevere. Thomas Parker Boyd tells us that if we eliminate self-limitation, we can achieve wisdom. And if we tap into our understanding that life is an ongoing process, a continuous flow, we will see how that infinite substance nurtures our existence on the physical, mental, and spiritual levels of our existence. Life is not stationary, nor can it be. The living body is forever changing by ceaseless vibrations of life within. The mental powers 
are forever, built up or depleted by the thoughts that flow from them and the truth that is discovered by them and that reacts upon them. The question of maintenance and renewal of life brings into view three distinct methods. First, the life of the body is constantly renewed by the use of other material forms in which divine energy is incorporated. Second, the energy and activity of the mind must be renewed and maintained by feeding on the truth found everywhere in the world about us and about our own experiences. To build up and preserve our body, we use material forms that are compounds of the infinite substance. And using it yields up certain elements of life that keep the body living. The food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe are all yielding up their life to us. This is everywhere true for the living rock yields up its life to the soil. The soil yields up its life to vegetation, vegetation in turn to the animal and the animals yield up its life to us. And we yield up our lives to and for each other. But this illustrates the method by which the infinite life gives to us its boundless store. Every human being at birth matriculates into the University of Hard Knocks, whose tutors, pain, trouble, and trial take us in hand and day by day seek to emancipate us from the hereditary strains of the ages and carry us up to the cosmic to personal consciousness, eliminating the ignorance of self-limitation and separateness and leading us to wisdom and unlimited life, the life of the divine being. Over and over, we must learn our lessons until they become part of ourselves. We do not always enjoy the process. One day we throw down the textbook and quit school, but the next day finds us at the task for God does not discharge the teachers and the school goes on. All wisdom and knowledge is experienced in the divine consciousness. But when it comes to the human side of it, we express only relatively. Of the things in the unlimited life, we catch prophetic glimpses in our hours of vision, but the far reaching material and spiritual facts of existence are not fully open to us. All the worlds now and to be, all the, poten all the potencies now at work and yet to unfold, for this is one thing, to bring us to that full divine awareness. We live out our life in the life of spirit. God gives out spirit's life in me. I will now manifest that life of spirit in perfect health, peace, and plenty. Again, this idea of <laughs> moving forward all the time. I'm gonna pause a minute. Does anybody have any um, comments right now? That was a lot. I like how he calls, uh, you know, <laughs> our, that we're in the university of hard knocks because I think sometimes it really, really feels that way. I know, I know you guys have been feeling that way with, you know, diminishing numbers here. It's like, what is going on? And yet I think part of it is to bring forth ideas like this and have an opportunity for conversation within these moments, you know, and, and um, I know I'm changing the order of operation today because of circumstances, but I think maybe we need to look at things like that because I don't know if the people that are moving forward that are really thinking about things are in a mindset to um, sit for a traditional hour and listen to everybody else more than offering thoughts and recognition and then having a chance for a conversation, which we've been doing more and more lately. Um, but I, I find that even our, our younger people, the ones that, that are coming, you know, I got a, a group of 20 somethings that come in here on Wednesdays and they wanna sit in the silence and then have a conversation about how they felt in that silence and how spirit is working in their lives now and their questions and their conversations are amazing. And it's, an, it's a 
great and beautiful and way to, to move everything forward. Um, because again, we, we have to have that action to move that consciousness forward. Um, you know what to press buttons with the conversation. I'm sorry, Cheryl, did you wanna talk? I, you know, I had a little bit of a discussion with one of my friends um, this morning about this because the thing that I was personally struggling with is that I'm having difficulty with the fact that like, I don't want to in any way judge other people, but what I'm finding is that some of the people that maybe I've been most hurt by or persecuted in some way um, are the ones who are giving the religious and spiritual statements. <laughs> so it's been really hard for me to try to not judge somebody when I know that their actions have not matched their, their words. Yeah, and it's a recognition that everybody is in their own process there. So sometimes the recognition of the definitions of the words or how to create action around those words <laughs> is very different than what um, somebody else who has maybe um, spent more time with that. And uh, again, that's one of the reasons I like showing you guys Ken Wilber stuff, because part of the, the teaching there and the philosophy in the integral process is realizing that as humans, there, we don't all recognize things in the same vein and different pieces of ourselves um, could be more mature than others, <laughs> right? So maybe our words are more mature, but our actions are not, or maybe they don't correlate um, because of, of how we separate up our lives. Like maybe, you know, there's a recognition sometimes at, at, and um, I know you guys know I've struggled with this. How much of our um, political world do you let bleed into conversations like this, right? How much do you allow that to, to merge? And yet the concepts are what we need to talk about and not the bashing of the people. And that's where, that's where the separation then becomes is, are we talking concepts and are we willing to refine and grow up in the concepts? Um, are we willing to recognize that there are some people that just are not in a space to uh, growing up to see the world in a, in a perspective that maybe we are? you know, and to recognize that we still have to grow up in our own perspective, <laughs> you know, and then to offer that energy exchange of awareness, I think helps raise the bar for everybody. And, um, and it's really hard because especially when those people um, that are saying things are maybe our closest friends or ones that have been with us the longest or, <laughs> or blood relatives that, you know, are with us a lot. And yet, um, you know, in our principles, we recognize that everybody is working at it at a different rate and to recognize that it's their path, right? And um, not that it's not hurtful, but that those are the things that we place on the side sometimes in this wisdom. All wisdom and knowledge is experienced in the divine consciousness. So what we are recognizing in the moment on how we're reacting is just as important as recognizing that the way they're reacting is not something that we want to take on for ourselves. There's a wisdom in that and an experience and a knowledge. And the more we're willing to act on that instead of holding it in and with resentment and act in a, in a way that, that shifts that, you know, and how we live our life and how we use our own words and recognizing it's not so much uh, 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 they and us, but uh, how we are, how we're defining some of these same words of divinity and soul <laughs> and everlasting life, you know, is, are there are definitions of that the same, you know, and sometimes, honestly, sometimes people just aren't ready for the conversation. And we need to recognize that too. I and mean, it totally, I, I remember, and this was, it was beautiful for me to watch. There's um, 
I was at a workshop about five years ago and um, one of the teachers, we had gone out to eat and one of the teachers was at my table and I have great respect for this man. And there was another lady at the table that I did not know. And um, she said something, and, and this is, um, you know, she said something about her experience and asked him a question. And his response, I got really excited at the response because I'm like, oh, wow, that's the way I've been thinking for years. And somebody just said it and I thought I was crazy. <laughs> and here's this man that's my teacher in this class that I'm respecting that says this, right? And the response from the other lady was um, kind of, you know, just not in the same place. <laughs> it was a, a, a more archaic um, recognition of that topic. And I watched it play out and instead of trying to further his understanding there, he left what he said lay there, let her say what she needed. And then we, I don't know, we went back to talking about how everybody's food was because there wasn't enough middle ground or recognition that, um, you know, that that conversation could even take place in that moment, which bummed me out terribly because I'm like, here's my opportunity. <laughs> But it was a great learning experience and to see how somebody else in real time handled this um, recognition that somebody's vocabulary, def you know, their definitions of the same topic were not the same and that they were more in a, a, a mythic type realm and, and they were more in a, you know, an integrated realm of understanding and to not diss her for that at all to recognize that she could say what she needed to say and be supported in that but the conversation from the viewpoint that he was having just couldn't take place at that time with that kind of mindset present that there needed to be you know more perspective there especially at a dinner light-hearted situation <laughs> does that make sense so and then um you know, and that was an action moving forward. It was a walking the talk sort of, you know, thing, respecting somebody else for where they're at, understanding that you have such a different perspective that right now that conversation can't take place, right? And then sometimes they can. I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of stories right now. There's been some really lovely ones um, put out in the news about people from really opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of the way they see the world. Um, coming together and being willing to respect the other person, not fully understand, they, they both admit, they're not totally understanding, but I'm willing to respect this and I'm gonna go to your group and see what that's about. And, and then they take turns going to the other group and, and so they can have a conversation. Now the groups are still doing what they want, the other people are there kind of observing. And so the two of them, just one out of each group are willing to have this conversation. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but it does move it forward, you know, because then other ones are seeing that there's a willingness to at least listen <laughs> to what else is out there, you know? And that's not always easy to find either, that person that's willing to have that conversation, um, but it, it's there. Does any of that make sense, Cheryl, for what you were? putting out there. Yeah. Anybody else want to say anything? Look here from Parker Boyd. It says there's no line between the human and the divine. So even when we're recognizing people that don't hold our viewpoint, there's still no line between them and the divine either. Whether, and the point is, are we recognizing them in that space? Are we willing to recognize it? And if we are recognizing it, how are we acting on it? Are we, are we hiding in ourselves because we know that the people around us aren't feeling the same? Or are we living it to the fullest in the best way we can? Are we recognizing that higher expression of the divine, accepting all of that painful input, you know, and growing up in it um, and manifesting anyway and sharing love anyway, <laughs> you know, but also knowing where our limits are, you know, like my teacher did that, that limit was, I'm still going to respect you, but I don't need to talk about this topic right now because it's just, we're not in the same place at all. Um, and are we willing to do that as well, especially with um, some of the people that are, are closest to us? Sometimes, you know, topics don't belong at the dinner table. Yeah. And one more quote here. 
A stream starting down the mountainside and finding a rock in the way doesn't try to batter its way through the rock, but finds the way of least resistance and so makes a channel along which it can move. It gradually wears away that very rock. So our willingness to be ourselves and finding a path that works for us, we don't have to like drive it home or convert or have arguments, but we do need to be us and that path, will, you know, and as we are more us and we follow that path, the path wears and it becomes easier and easier. I will uh, say one thing that I, I really like your whole talk today. And in my little circle of individuals that I know, my family, I'm the only one who is new thought, so to speak. And so I keep my mouth shut because for the longest time, I thought that there was something wrong with me or my thinking. And I've come to the realization that, like you said, everybody has their own way of thinking. And I'm not going to push my thoughts on anybody. But I do like it when someone thinks like me when I run into that. And I could have a nice conversation with them. But um, I really appreciate your talk today and realize I have realized for a long time that I'm not alone in the world. There's many, many people like me, and especially today with the humanity that is being shown around the world. I think that is a wonderful thing, and I believe it is Holy Spirit guided, I guess I would say, and um, I just appreciate your thoughts today, your talk. And thanks for sharing. Yeah, there is a lot of good stuff. I mean, there's a lot of icky stuff, but it seems like the icky stuff is bringing the good out of the woodwork. Yeah.